Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, The Spirit of Slovenian Mobility. This is a series of five topics, and first one was urban air mobility, second one was uh, the high-end and high-tech, and today's one is uh, mobility as a service. Uh, my name is Daniel Audagic, and I will be your today's host and moderator, and AV Living Lab is basically partnering with the agency Spirit, who is the main organizer of this webinar. So today's topic is uh, uh, mobility as a service. And if we look why mobility as a service is the next disruption in automotive mobility space, we have to look into two trends. First trend is, of course, rapid urbanization. So what it's clearly is that in 50s, um, only 740 million people were living in the cities, while today we have more than 4, 4 billion, and it is growing to close to up to 7 billion by 2050. And if we show this visual perspective even uh, further, we can see that urbanization is basically exponentially growing, which means more pressure on cities, uh, how to manage space, infrastructure, resources, and clearly moving from ownership to uh, sharing, moving from, you know, uh, using single occupancy vehicle from going A to B to share, hopefully soon autonomous and electric, so meaning sustainable mobility, will contribute to zero accident society, sustainable mobility, which is good for our planet, and also better management of resources. And clearly uh, we could, you know, be giving more park space back to uh, citizens in the cities. So next trend, uh, which is also showing this uh, exponential growth is the rise of mega cities. So mega cities are cities with population uh, larger than 10 million people. And in 50s, we had only two mega cities, which were Tokyo and New York. Today, more than 4, 34 megacities and growing to 50. Uh, so what will happen later on, uh, and this is an estimation in, 2000, uh, in 2100, is that a lot of fastest and the biggest and the larger cities will be in the emerging market. So clearly there is a need for better solution and new choice. And we would like to present you our Slovenian uh, landscape or ecosystem of the key uh, mobility as a service uh, providers, developers. And uh, today you will hear an inspiring and very insightful uh, presentations from Avantcar, GoGiro, GoOpti, Nomago, Automotive Association of Slovenia, MSS, and they will deliver a short keynote presentation. And after the show, show keynote presentation, there will be a round table where you are kindly invite to ask questions and contribute to the conversation. But before we start with keynotes, I would like to give the word to our main organizer, the Spirit of Slovenia, to Mr. Vit Habian, who is the head of foreign direct investment promotion department at Spirit of Slovenia. Thank you, Daniel. Dear ladies and gentlemen, good day to all of you. I'm honored to welcome you today on the third in a series of five mobility events, the Spirit of Slovenia Mobility. Spirit Slovenia is a Slovenian government business development agency, which is a single contact point uh, for potential investors or international companies looking for new business opportunities in our country. Our today focus will be on Slovenian companies which are among the best mobility as a service. Daniel already mentioned them. As I read yesterday, according to Eurobarometer, 93% of Europeans agree that climate, changes, uh, is a climate change is a serious problem. And one third of Europeans are using eco-friendly alternatives to the car, such as walking, cycling, taking uh, public transport or car sharing, to reduce CO2 emissions. With the rapid digitalization of mobility, this is a great opportunity for new players to become uh, mobility as a service provider, 
and to offer greener transport uh, to everyone. As you will see in presentations and discussion, Slovenia is a perfect ecosystem for mobility as a service providers, from cities and uh, to dispersed uh, settlements with developed physical and digital infrastructure. Uh, Slovenia is ideal country, country as a lab to test new urban and rural uh, mobility solutions. With highly educated people, Almost 50% of our young uh, people are studying and researching at our globally recognized universities. And with the most artificial intelligence researchers per capita in the European Union, our companies are developing uh, top mobility solutions. Besides that, our territory was an important intersection of roads already a few millennia ago. We have always been among the first to adopt new mobility solution. From trains in the middle of 19th century, mobile payment of public transport two decades ago, to the first certified electric airplane last year. Even today, Slovenia is a major hub for logistic and passenger mobility, which are important accelerators of our economy and constantly bringing new mobility and logistic solutions to the world. In Slovenia, we are focusing on green technologies and with the creative talent of our workforce, delivering smart solutions. I would like to invite you all to contact us if you have any questions or queries. We would be really, help, uh, really happy to assist you. And I would also like to invite you to Slovenia and get to know our uh, potential. But now let us hear breakthrough solutions from this five of our Slovenian companies and their vision of the future in mobility as a service. Thank you. Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Habian, for this, for your kind words. And as you mentioned, you know, Slovenia being as a country, as a lab, I need to say that our next speaker, who is Mr. Matej Cher from Avantcar, he started, uh, you know, very, very early with only electric, shared mobility. So it was basically station-based car sharing solution. So it's really, it would be really honor now to hear again where they are heading because, you know, last five years for them are amazing. So it's great to hear where they will be for next five years. So Matej, the stage is yours. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Uh, Daniel, uh, hello, everybody. Um, uh, it's great uh, to be a uh, guest in such a important and uh, trendy event uh, as we have today. And uh, um, I will try to do my best uh, to share with you in a few minutes uh, about our project and activity with it and uh, where we are heading to. So um, uh, let me start with the, with the name. My name is Matej Cher. As Daniel mentioned, Avantcar is uh, our company. And uh, um, what we do, actually, we are developing and uh, providing mobility as a service solutions in the region of, uh, at the moment, in the region of Slovenia, Croatia, and North Macedonia, and hopefully soon uh, wider in the Europe as well. Um, uh, so uh, I want, uh, let's start with company profile. So we see us as a leading regional provider from building the service with vast, uh, vast experience in different programs. Uh, we did more than probably on close to 15 million kilometers in the last eight, nine years uh, with more than 500 electric vehicles at the moment. Uh, among them, uh, uh, more than 100 Tesla Model S, 3 and X. Uh, so we, we are on the market already 18 years. Uh, with more than much 100 employees and uh, the services we provide uh, are not only electric and electric mobility infrastructure and car sharing but as well uh, full service leasing with the fleet management for the companies and uh, um, delivery delivery and uh, classical rental uh, services uh, we operate with uh, more than 3000 vehicles at the moment uh, we're uh, almost close to 20% or 100% electric in the region I already mentioned before. Uh, so, um, or let's say pivot, uh, pilot or pivoting product, uh, uh, pilot or pivoting product um, is a digitalized 100% uh, electric smart way of uh, how, to, how to use uh, 
transport uh, transport assets in order to provide this innovative mobility is a one to go system um, which at the moment uh, offer to the market uh, car sharing services uh, Anderson electric delivery and as well uh, uh, slowly uh, keyless rental uh, for short-term rental uh, needs. Uh, actually, mobile app is the key to the hundreds of cars. And uh, um, in the other side, in the other side, uh, our customers uh, actually don't have any care and the need to uh, 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 charge, clean, uh, register, whatever uh, do as they need to do with the uh, owned cars, but uh, they only drive when they need and uh, they only pay for what uh, uh, they must. Yeah. So uh, I would ask next slide. Uh, products and key avant car uh, action areas uh, are from uh, products I already mentioned, sharing, uh, delivery, fleet management, rental. And on the other side as well, um, uh, um, we, we, uh, must, we needed to uh, work in um, areas like uh, education, mind shifting, uh, uh, and, and development from business, business models to uh, research and development uh, regarding technology. So we established the um, uh, eight years ago, uh, we established uh, R&D team. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, um, which which uh, had a goal uh, to really understand the new technology opportunities and uh, where the world is moving in order to be able, uh, and uh, the changes in the society in order to be able to create uh, solutions uh, based on new infrastructure and technology and business models. Uh, to help human development in the way of higher quality of life. Uh, and uh, as we know, uh, the sustainable approach is the only way uh, to act in new economy. Next slide, please. Uh, so first, we needed to face to understand the, the key problems uh, we have in uh, mobility sector uh, from, um, from uh, emissions, uh, low utilization. We know that more than 95% of time uh, vehicles are parked and they are uh, they are taking space in the urban areas, uh, even more in, in the region like Slovenia, Croatia, 50% uh, of monthly income goes to these uh, assets, uh, which are 95% non-utilized. Uh, we don't have uh, fuel, uh, 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 oil in uh, in the region, we need to import it, so we are dependent on uh, import, and uh, we cannot control the the price and the volume we can get. Uh, nowadays, we know what does it mean if the the borders are closed. Uh, everything can stop in the moment, uh, and uh, as well technology. Uh, yesterday, we didn't have connected vehicles, so we didn't we weren't able to see clear and to act fast enough and to optimize uh, utilization of the asset. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so our actions toward this, uh, regarding these problems, toward solution, went first into implementing mobility service uh, uh, technologies uh, using IoT, where we connected the, the vehicles and uh, build the own office infrastructure. Um, uh, we developed different uh, business models and mobility uh, products, uh, and uh, uh, as well, uh, uh, we try to do as much uh, as possible uh, in order uh, to help transition to 100% electric. And uh, we decided to put in our new fleets on the electric cars. So new challenges as well uh, were uh, on the market without infrastructure and without knowing how they will behave and how the uh, customers at the end uh, will be able to use them uh, uh, to, to, to save to have to have the same commodity as before so we face many challenges but all the solutions were oriented uh, um, uh, toward toward uh, solving this, uh, these uh, challenges yeah? uh, next slide please uh, so our solution is uh, based on simplicity and uh, mobile app, which we developed, uh, had to be uh, really very friendly <coughs> and simple for end users. Uh, in one mobile app, we integrated uh, car sharing uh, system, uh, car rental, and as well uh, delivery. Next slide, please. Uh, 
want to go car sharing uh, is 24 7 app based self service which already operate uh, five years now in uh, in the market we transit the vehicles as i mentioned um, uh, in the car and the delivery uh, i already mentioned in previous slide next slide please uh, and uh, to, in order to support uh, this uh, transition uh, and uh, acquisition of uh, new modern uh, green uh, cust uh, users customers uh, for sure we needed to uh, act uh, act uh, a lot in the field of education and um, accelerating mind shift uh, and building awareness uh, on the market so we had more than 500 uh, public lectures uh, con uh, attending conferences presentations in the last five years really to accelerate this uh, mind shift yeah. uh, next slide please uh, then we built uh, several showrooms uh, where people could uh, approach and uh, talk to our consultants and uh, get some ideas, understandings. Uh, what does it mean, electric car? What does it mean, mobility as a service? How they can use it? Uh, we have this kind of showroom in Zagreb, uh, in the main business area in Dubrovnik, and as well in Ljubljana. Next slide, please. Uh, then we uh, uh, deployed uh, uh, and built the infrastructure in one of the new, very modern uh, energy efficient building in Ljubljana with solar power plant on the roof. Uh, and then in the garage, we have 40 charging uh, stations and uh, storage, battery storage. So um, uh, our team, uh, we produce, uh, we produce uh, uh, around 200 uh, uh, the energy for 200 electric kilometer a day. So our team uh, who is driving on electric cars in Ljubljana for their logistic needs uh, can actually drive on the sun over the head. And as well, the residents in this building, when they bought the apartment uh, apartments, they got free 40 hours of car sharing. So they, 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 they had choice to decide to enter without own car, just using the community communities kind of community uh, infrastructure service in the house and uh, and uh, drive on the sun as well from the day roof. Yeah. Uh, this is the second kind of show. Then next step, the next slide, please. Uh, charging infrastructure uh, in order to be able to build uh, business models fast enough. Uh, we, uh, we weren't uh, able to uh, to rely on uh, existing infrastructure but we needed to do it by ourselves so we start more than 200 uh, chargers by ourselves uh, and uh, that's the way how so that's the reason why we decided for station based car sharing so we could control we could control the the energy for the cars and uh, provide 24/7 uh, service to our customers uh, next uh, this is the solar on the roof. Yeah, next one. I already showed this slide before. So, and uh, for the end, I would maybe go a bit deeply in Avantova project. At the end, cover will be the uh, overall uh, the main the main the main uh, mobility service lead, and all the other services will go under this uh, brand. Uh, so the project. Um, is based on growth experience we gathered uh, as a mobility service provider in the last years and uh, uh, it was 24 7 app based as already mentioned uh, paper use uh, uh, a state of the art electric vehicles any rental period uh, we, 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 uh, we, we put the location on uh, main spots from shopping centers uh, residential areas uh, city center uh, airport the connected airport uh, uh, with the city as well uh, and uh, what is most important uh, you always find the free parking uh, or parking and you always find the car uh, on the place where you know you can uh, you can get it yeah. uh, next slide please uh, we started with car sharing uh, 2016 uh, when Ljubljana um, uh, was a green capital uh, 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 and uh, it was kind of uh, it was kind of uh, let's say uh, common common uh, common activity uh, which support uh, which support actually uh, this this brand and uh, till today uh, next slide please till today uh, we had uh, we had exponential growth um, uh, even bigger even last year when the, very lots of months uh, the, the the 
economy was uh, in the low mode. Uh, we have uh, at the moment more than 300 vehicles, uh, two, two, 120 locations, um, five different uh, models, select car models in the fleet. We operate in six cities, uh, three countries, uh, uh, and um, uh, we have, as I already mentioned, we did more than 500 uh, lectures, uh, courses, and uh, reaching almost uh, 20,000 registered users. Uh, among our users are more than 200 companies, uh, eight ministries, uh, faculties, municipalities. Next slide, please. Um, so we are we are uh, spreading uh, in the other cities as well soon. Uh, Slovenia, Croatia, and the region. Next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, as I mentioned, five different cars in the fleet. Next slide, please. Uh, our key users are individuals, companies, education organizations, municipalities, ministries. Uh, um, Slovenia is one of the first countries where public, where 100% electric cars uh, uh, from sharing uh, system are used, uh, uh, works for public services as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, last five, from this 2016 till today, as I mentioned, we have exponential growth. Next slide, please. Uh, and uh, at the end, um, as we uh, passed five years uh, this June, uh, end of May, we did a satisfaction survey with our customers. Uh, customers, and what is most important for us, 95% of respondents would definitely or very likely recommend our service. And uh, and. Um, Nine of ten uh, rated high, highest level quality of service. Uh, so this is this is for us uh, a good good uh, base for the future and uh, and uh, spreading this service and business models uh, in the wider region. Uh, next slide. Uh, that's from my side. Thank you very much, and uh, let's talk later. More. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, of course, after all short keynotes, we will have a roundtable and it will be very interesting to hear your thoughts and also engage with our uh, dear audience. So the next speaker is Clement Furlan, the CEO of GoGiro. So GoGiro is also an important player in mobility as a service landscape, starting from micro mobility, but also, you know, building the multimodal offering, moving to cars and other types of transportation. So Mr. Furlan, uh, please share with us your presentation. Thank you. Uh, so basically just to, to give you uh, an idea of uh, what we do, um, we are a software development company uh, that does uh, only mobility solutions. We started with uh, two road type of car sharing uh, three years ago. Uh, so it was peer-to-peer -peer car sharing uh, platform that is still in existence. Uh, it's uh, a little bit of head ahead of time, but uh, of course we, we see great traction. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, what we are last uh, in last uh, year most known for is uh, offering uh, micro mobility with uh, e-scooters and e-bikes. Uh, we are currently uh, offering around uh, 300, close to 300 units in Slovenian coast and uh, in uh, Ljubljana, uh, also some tourist uh, municipalities like Bled. Um, uh, so in, in this last year, uh, in regards to, to times that, uh, let's say at least half of the time we were kind of closed. Uh, we, we, we did uh, more than 10,000 uh, uh, rental, uh, vehicle rentals, uh, mostly in Ljubljana um, with, with uh, e-scooters. We are very proud of uh, uh, our uh, successful uh, collaboration with, with, with city of Ljubljana. Um, basically, we managed to, to, to um, uh, uh, organize uh, a structure that can be can be replicated to to even more vehicles. Um, uh, so we are using at this moment we are using uh, uh, existing uh, infrastructure, bike infrastructure as a, a, a 
uh, pit, uh, pit stop points uh, as uh, uh, release areas for our vehicles. And we are very proud that we didn't have any issues like uh, uh, other cities had. Uh, uh, we all know of, uh, of uh, e-scooters uh, staying on the roads or, or being thrown uh, in, 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 in rivers or, or something like this. Uh, we, we, together with the city, managed to, to, have, uh, to make a very uh, sustainable, uh, uh, sustainable uh, way to, to actually offer this very environmentally friendly and uh, 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 futuristic type of transport that offers actually only A to B transport. So you don't have to worry about uh, where where to leave the the, the e scooter? We have great uh, relationship also with insurance company called Zorovalnica Triglau uh, that uh, also provides insurance for third party uh, um, uh, uh, damage or even injuries. Uh, of, on, and also we are uh, uh, we are able to to actually insure these vehicles. Uh, against theft, so so uh, we are proud of uh, building sustainable uh, business model that can be replicated in in greater numbers. Um, so um, uh, the the what I'm presenting today is, is a, a, a new gen of uh, of our GoJiro software, uh, which is heavily based on, on uh, geolocation options, which is one thing that is, uh, I think, quite revolutionary. Um, it's important to know that all our vehicles uh, have uh, IoT systems uh, as a part of these vehicles, uh, meaning uh, a computer that uh, is constantly in communication with, with uh, uh, um, uh, servers uh, with network and um, uh, we are able this way to control the speeds the 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 stations uh, um, and uh, different other options even even uh, a range of of our vehicles in this way and uh, what i'm presenting now is uh, an application uh, for hospitality businesses um, meaning uh, hotels, camps, marinas, uh, municipalities in tourism, uh, which have, uh, um, which are kind of um, afraid of offering micro mobility options due to uh, extra employees, uh, uh, heavy, uh, uh, very, very steep learning curve in, in order to start this type of business. Um, we managed to make it as simple as possible. So I would please ask you for, oh, okay. So uh, for, for this uh, hospitality businesses, um, uh, we see a problem that uh, once the, the guests in the morning after breakfast leave their uh, hotels or, or other venues, uh, they lose traction of revenues to their guests. They go around the city, they take a go for a lunch in, in different places, uh, and they don't have a, a, a revenue stream anymore until they come in the, back in the evening and, and start uh, and go maybe for a dinner uh, uh, at, at best, and uh, maybe then they go back to, 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 to bed and maybe take a little snack from, from a mini bar. Um, so uh, uh, our solution is um, to actually uh, uh, offer easy micro mobility business uh, that can be um, started without any new employees um, and uh, what uh, uh, and started maybe in, in, in a month or even less uh, with as low maintenance cost, uh, as low uh, involvement with, uh, uh, as low involvement with uh, these uh, uh, employees, uh, only reception workers can be enough. So no extra employees. Basically, um, 
um, if I go in history, uh, how um, this uh, free float uh, uh, e-bike and uh, e-scooter sharing started, uh, it, it is really new industry. Uh, uh, it started now uh, a little bit le uh, less than four years ago, uh, and it made uh, huge strides towards uh, this time. Um, huge improvements have been made in, in area of uh, quality of vehicles. Uh, we, we are proud to say that our vehicles, which are one year old, um, have, uh, are really reliable. Um, uh, happy to report that no serious accidents so far have been reported. Um, we think that uh, due to longer uh, vehicle uh, wheelbase and larger vehicles, uh, these type of vehicles are not that prone to, to accidents. Um, small vehicles and uh, short wheelbase are very different. Uh, uh, very, very dangerous for, for drivers, uh, which uh, I, I guess we all uh, uh, heard about. Then the other thing, uh, uh, application, uh, application, uh, uh, applications have uh, made huge strides. So this moment we can offer to, to customers, to our uh, hospitality customers, virtual uh, endpoints. So basically, uh, if if a, if a customer has a, a, a hotel has a, um, only one stop, so let's say in front of hotel, we do this virtually. So we just uh, uh, um, uh, put in the GPS GP, uh, GPS coordinates, and uh, we are uh, setting up this virtual uh, uh, end and start point for this type of vehicles, meaning no, there is no need to, to actually uh, pick up and collect these vehicles around the, city, uh, around the towns or cities, um, making it very easy to recharge and, and to, to, to service. Um, great deal has been done in, in uh, making application, uh, applications as easy as possible uh, for users to start. So our goal is, uh, 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 30 seconds uh, onboarding time from the time that uh, a guest see the fleet in front of the hotel until he uh, puts in his credit card and starts driving, which I think is very important. Industry, industry in this uh, uh, in this area in this uh, segment has done lots of uh, lots of um, improvements. Um, Basically, we are uh, following the, the, the biggest players in this area, like Line, Tier, Voy, and, and, and Bird. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really important for, for uh, applications to be as user-friendly as possible. Um, Multi-rent options. So, so we are uh, at this moment the, 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 the only ones in this area that offers um, multiple rent, multiple vehicle rent. Uh, so a family of uh, four can, can rent out uh, from one account all four vehicles, which I think is uh, very, very uh, important uh, for user friendliness. Um, and uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, um, making it easy as possible for, for uh, hotels to start business and to have uh, all the all the uh, payment options, uh, different payment options available is, is quite important. Um, so basically, um, what was the problem until now? Uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, I'm proud to say, the, the only prob uh, product in, uh, in the world at this moment that is focused uh, strictly into tourism. We think that uh, uh, there is a, a, a high interest. Uh, we see that there is a high interest in, of hospitality businesses to actually keep the revenue stream uh, uh, from, their, from their guests uh, even after the, 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 the guest leaves the, the hotel uh, uh, in the morning um, and uh, uh, offering their, them a, a, a vehicle um, that 
uh, has a incorporated integrated product. So uh, I will now move to, to one thing that we are doing with Tourism Ljubljana. Um, uh, we are doing a, a guided tours. It's, it's, it will be launched on 16th of August. And what we are doing is an integrated product of uh, 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 e-scooter rental together with uh, a navigation and visit, visits of uh, different uh, uh, known parts of uh, Ljubljana, uh, integrating uh, uh, Ljubljana tourist card, so offerings from Ljubljana tourist cards uh, uh, into the, the offering um, and uh, using navigation to bring them exactly uh, uh, through, through guided tour. Um, basically, we call this uh, an add-on, uh, a digital guide, which uh, is, is the same cost for one or for 50 people. Uh, we all know that tourist guides uh, uh, cost money and uh, uh, groups with less than 10 people until now could not afford or, or was not uh, um, a sensible idea to actually uh, have a, a, a tourist guide just for few people. So uh, this is one thing that uh, we're really, really proud of, and uh, we are starting with this project on 16th of, uh, of uh, August um, to actually offer uh, a free guided, digitally guided tours that can uh, incorporate other, other uh, offerings. Uh, so uh, we can incorporate some uh, museum entrances, we can uh, incorporate some uh, uh, food, beverage, uh, uh, hospitality into these units. And in this way, uh, hotels can, can prepare the packages for, for uh, in their municipalities for uh, different, uh, different uh, 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 guests and their needs. I will just I will just uh, show you some some uh, examples uh, and then I will uh, finish. So um, uh, uh, this is an example of uh, uh, Postoina, uh, um, one of the most known um, uh, tourism spot, beautiful caves, and also Predjama Castle. We are pitching at this moment to them this offering. So uh, basically, they. They have uh, 1.3 million visitors yearly. And most of those are, are uh, going to Postoina Cave. Uh, however, they have many other, um, many other uh, uh, tourist attractions and uh, they are not as, vi as visited as they could be. In this way, we are able to, to actually maximize the area for, for, uh, for uh, this uh, hotspot uh, they, there are many other beautiful places that uh, might not be um, available to guests on on food it's just too much too too, uh, too, too long a way so we can see here that five kilometers uh, uh, away or even seven and a half kilometers aerial distance away you have much uh, more beautiful uh, landscapes uh, that can be visited in, in this way using micromobility that can reach 25 kilometers per hour and uh, make tourists spend less energy. So uh, yeah, um, thank you for, uh, uh, for your uh, uh, attention and uh, yeah, glad to talk to you in, in, uh, in conference later. Uh, thank you, Clement. And I'm looking forward to the roundtable discussion because, you know, uh, having a niche in a tourism for, you know, micro mobility, I think it's a nice opportunity which could be expanded also elsewhere outside Slovenia internationally, globally. Mm -hmm. So now we are moving to the next speaker, who is Mr. Marko Gucek, the CEO of GoOpti Company. And the GoOptic company is uh, our mobility as a service provider, uh, mainly uh, offering vans sharing, so shared mobility offering. So Mr. Gucek, please share with us uh, your view, strategy, and vision. My name is Michael Gucek, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of GoOpti. Uh, GoOpti is a dynamic shuttle platform, uh, bringing to passengers convenience of a car, which means shared door-to-door -door service at desired time, 
for the price of a bus. Uh, just a second. Uh, but before we go deeper uh, and go opti, let's see what is ahead of all of us. Uh, in 2020, EU raised ambition to cut for 55% CO2 emissions below 1990 levels until 2030. On the graph, we see all sectors are more or less successful, but transportation is truly far away from the goals. And uh, if we go now into details, we see majority of pollution is coming actually in transportation out of road transport, 72%. Uh, and from road transportation, personal car creates 60% of all emissions. And if we look on the right side of the slide, uh, we see that electrical vehicles do not help much in this moment. It will take a lot of time to deploy enough electric vehicles uh, and even more time to make electricity clean. The only possible solution to significantly reduce emissions in such short time is to reduce number of personal vehicles on the road and increase usage of shared mobility alternatives. But for people to make that kind of shift, uh, this means change of habits. And habits take a long time to change. And we believe that uh, we can speed up this change if alternative experience would be similar to existing experience with personal car. And on the graph, we see there is one alternative actually missing. Taxis are too expensive for daily usage. Bus or train are not direct and nearby, nor have the frequency for majority of movement needs, especially in medium-sized cities like Ljubljana. Bicycle, scooter, and walking are great on right distances and in right weather conditions. Uh, car sharing is not always so cheap and not always everywhere available when you need it. Uh, so in the end, if we look at all usage cases of average user, personal car still wins in convenience and affordability. Uh, which are two most deciding factors. So we see that uh, we can change the mindset of users from car being our freedom to selection of alternatives being our freedom and car actually being something you have issues with like maintenance and parking uh, and so on. So we just need to crack one more service which should be door to door at more or less desired time as taxi but cheaper. And uh, here we believe GoOpti can help. Uh, we actually successfully convinced people to leave their cars at home and drive with us. 76% of our clients did so. Based on our average occupancy, we calculate that our passenger has in average 28 grams of emissions per kilometer, which is actually 70% less than if you drive with your own car. Uh, and even less than a lot of different public transportation services, which do not have so good average occupancy. Um, so, so far with over 2 million transported passengers, we reduced over 22,000 tons of CO2 emissions. So a bit of history, we started 10 years ago with connecting the medium sized cities in Slovenia, then North Italy and Croatia with regional airports which means not just the closest ones, but also more distant, between one and three hours away, where was usually no direct public transport connection. And GOPT is actually a platform that with dynamic pricing and pooling algorithms makes possible for shuttle companies to operate profitably shared rides also on less traveled routes, and on the other side provides reliability to our passengers so that the service will be executed also if booked for very low price. And we offer alternative services for various passenger needs. Sometimes passengers choose our private service, which is like taxi, just cheaper, uh, because we can fill up the vehicle in both directions and have less empty kilometers. Uh, we offer shared service where client defines departure time and other customers need to accept this time. Uh, if at this desired time, maybe also direct bus exists, we can offer it also. Uh, and if nothing is available for good price, we offer also shared with flexibility window where a client defines acceptable time scope of departure or arrival. Uh, and the results are truly happy customers. Uh, we have amazing NPS of 75, uh, mostly because even clients that choose flexibility window in the end due to our optimization algorithms still get transported very close to their ideal time of departure. So the result is similar comfort as personal car for a truly low price. And on the other side of our marketplace, uh, we have also successful franchises whose turnover increased significantly in following years of joint cooperation. 
Um, and let me finish with our vision. Um, municipality of Ljubljana set up a goal to reduce personal car rides by 20% until 2027. But they face a huge issue. Uh, there is over 120,000 daily commuters coming to Ljubljana from all around Slovenia, uh, and majority with their cars alone. Uh, and to decrease number of those rides, we would need 1,000 vans all over Slovenia. They would be bringing daily commuters to Ljubljana in the morning and in the afternoon back. Some of them would be connecting their cities or villages also during the day for the needs of elderly and younger population, visiting maybe doctor, going shopping and other errands. And the rest of the vehicles would be in Ljubljana offering shuttle and taxi service to everyone needing short hops within Ljubljana on routes where there is no direct connection but by bus. And the result is 1,000 new jobs all around Slovenia, including rural areas. Every passenger saves 70% of their emissions and personal car rides are reduced for 20%, therefore reducing traffic on the roads and consequently congestion. So um, for this project, we are in preparation phase, seeking partners to build more sustainable transportation together. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Marco. Um, yes, very interesting to see your development over the last 10 years. And now we are moving to our next speaker, who is Marian Biltran, uh, the Chief Mobility Officer at Nomago Company. So we are going from vans to even a larger type of transportation, meaning buses, but they are not only offering mobility as a service uh, with uh, buses, but they are also having the complete multimodal strategy portfolio and offering. So, Mr. Marian, the stage is yours. Yes, hello. Thank you for this uh, introduction. Um, as said, just, ah, okay. Um, I would like to start shortly with a presentation of Nomago, who we are and what we do for all those who, who don't, know, don't know Nomago. Uh, Nomago is basically a 90 year old bus company on one side, a 20 year old plus travel company. And uh, we kind of merged around 13 companies in the past years. And roughly three years ago, Nomago was born. So Nomago is a three year old mobility startup with more than 1000 employees. Our main focus is moving people in any way. So we believe that uh, public transportation yeah, is the backbone of any integrated mobility in the future in a smart city. And smarter cities, yeah, are the key to sustainable mobility. And of course, sustainable mobility, in our opinion, is crucial for Slovenia becoming net zero emission country, uh, thus realizing our common vision, Slovenia Green. Uh, to achieve this vision, we need to change the culture. This is, this is out of out of most important to us. Uh, and we need to change the way we move, we work, we play on a daily basis. And uh, mobility is the key and digitalization is the mean to achieve that. Uh, we need to aim to, to change daily mobility patterns, daily travel behaviors. And uh, that said, it's only natural that we are on a long-term path, we as Nomago, uh, from a bus or travel company to becoming an IT mobility company. However, on this path, we will only su succeed if including other stakeholders and joining forces with uh, other companies rather than competing. So the, the goal must be uh, common. Uh, we focus ourselves on a 50 to 1 initiative, which aims to remove 30 or 50 cars from the roads by putting commuters on buses, basically bettering their time spent on the road and optimizing, optimizing current infrastructure, achieving less pollution, congestions, uh, also parking problems. You basically, all the mass that a single rider in a car, whether, whether being a diesel, hybrid, electric, shared autonomous brings it brings with with uh, basically being used on a car so our future stands within the next mobility pillars from basically connected mobility on one side to shared on demand and intermodal mobility 
And finally, all leading to the holy grail of autonomous vehicles, which technology is promising to provide optimal results for, for basically for everybody, for companies, municipalities, users, and uh, finally also the environment. In short, I'll, I'll present three pillars of development we at Nomago are currently working on. So this is intercity, charter, and micromobility. We envision mobility as a, as a platform in our key sectors and within three stages. So uh, intercity and charter, SaaS, so software as a service, as an operating system for bus operators in their operational stage, midware as support, and marketplace as uh, and marketplace connectivity as the business driven front side of the customer acquisition stage. So all these three stages together are supporting and making the user journey and experience unique. Our intercity operating system is uh, a system for bus fleet managers uh, that allows backend digitalization of a bus company or any similar operator. It could be a, 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 a ferry operator, for example, or, or similar. So from lines, timetables, uh, bus mapping on one side to app and driver and, and web sales on the other side, uh, this is all included, included in the platform. And of course, not forgetting the on-the-move customer support, which is for us key because we always look at the customer and user in the center. Um, and we offer experience like bus tardiness tracking, uh, bus location tracking, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, all this powered, of course, by data analytics for route, for city pair, dynamic pricing is included. And uh, finally, we don't forget about the experience measurement with driver ratings and gamifications. Uh, Nomago Charter Platform is the next uh, development on our side. Is basically aiming to provide similar tools as uh, Intercity does for scheduled transport for charter operators. So Nomago Charter is basically aiming at charter operators uh, worldwide. So we offer uh, optimizing planning of resources like uh, fleets and human resources optimization, which is crucial for any anybody who's now working in mobility sector in, in Europe and worldwide to optimizing empty legs, et cetera. Uh, and on the other side, we are basically personalizing and op, uh, automating. We are automating seamless booking experience basically in a sector that has never been digitalized yet. So this is from what we've seen uh, in our experience in the world. And it's a unique platform worldwide, I would guess. Uh, basically we built from scratch from our own pain points and uh, as a leading pro charter provider in the country and in the area, uh, we're using our domain knowledge and, and this domain knowledge is, is paired with, uh, with the IT experience and uh, the IT supported something that, uh, that uh, we needed to develop for ourselves to, to basically to survive for the next, uh, to, the next uh, to the next stage. Um, on our future development pillars is uh, also micromobility. Our vision, our core vision for micromobility is smart and hybrid bike sharing systems based on multiple bike platforms and providers. So we, we want to join together with with everybody who offers micromobility in, in an area. So uh, in order, what is our goal here is basically maximizing availability and usability of a bike or any other means of transport, like could be a scooter or, or, or a car shared, uh, for example, in order to basically maximize the, the satisfaction of the user. So again, the user is in the center of, uh, of our, our, our thoughts, yeah, always. Due to the fact, yeah, that we are uh, a bus company, yeah, uh, we believe that mobility without mobility hubs has very limited uh, future. As we own 20 plus uh, legacy bus stations, basically across the country, we see the need of transforming all that, let's say, old buildings in, in a super great locations, uh, 
uh, to modern mobility hubs with software and spatial planning and a spatial approach for seamless integration of different services, different products, of course, again, with the user in the center of the planning. Due to the, the fact that uh, we have, as I, I mentioned in the, in the beginning, that, that is why it's for merged around 13 companies, and, and this is still ongoing, each of those companies brought with them some legacy, yeah? And seeing that, we are aware of the lack of automation in several touch points from sales to user experience to operations. All that history and transformation we had to go through, or we're still going through because it's a, it's a really, really long term and in some occasions painful process that we are basically acing. It made us discover that we believe platformization is the key to a sound mobility environment. Mobility is the future, and in the future, will have to be based on sustainable data-driven platforms. And they will only long-term work if used hand-in-hand -hand together with uh, multiple different stakeholders providing mobility in an environment, as we believe that mobility will be a winner and will be successful in the future only if everybody in this area or in this sector will join hands and have the user in the center of the of the of their focus uh, so we have started our technology ventures from this belief and we aim to provide best platforms to support future integration and to achieve full mobility integration to a coherent mobility system this is basically what we're striving to, and this is why I believe and we believe in Namago, we are going to, to become an IT mobility company. And I would like to thank you for your time and uh, welcome you all to come along uh, on this future of mobility with us. Thank you. Thank you, Mariam, for sharing your transformation, you know, from bus company to IT mobility company. So our next speaker is coming from more than a hundred years old organization. And uh, basically they, they are Automotive Association of Slovenia, Mr. Jana Skrižan, who is business development officer and chief innovation officer at Automotive Association of Slovenia. And basically they are transforming themselves from road assistance to mobility integrator. So please share with us your presentation. So thank you, Daniel, for uh, your kind words. Uh, uh, let's go a bit through how we at uh, Automotive and Mobile uh, Cycle Association of Slovenia see the future of uh, mobility. Uh, I believe that we don't need to stress out uh, much on uh, how important or what kind of strategic priority sustainability has become for a variety of industries that we are part of. Uh, climate change and environmental degradation are definitely something that we need to put our focus on. And But just talking about it and seeing what the European Commission and European Union uh, would like to see in the next 5, 10 or 15 years uh, the result of uh, this kind of uh, 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 expectation is usually, usually a highly repressive regulation, which we don't like because in practice, that means just paying more taxes. That's one part of the story. But in the other part of the story, when you are under a pressure of making your business more sustainable, you definitely have two options. Either you go with the flow, basically wait for the industry to change and follow it or you are the one in the driver's seat and trying to make the change yourself or at least support making the change in the future. Uh, we had a lot of discussion about this uh, uh, in Amazon and we decided to go the way where we are the ones making the change. Uh, that's why we started a small project it's called NOMO which stands short for new mobility and we defined some objectives of how we would like to influence the future of mobility uh, especially in Slovenia uh, from this point of view. So the main objectives are basically two. We want to change the habit, so make a change and help improve air quality in urban areas. We need to understand that one third of all air pollutants in Slovenia, according to the 
last available data originates from traffic. So we have huge room for improvement. And we want to be those who will help make the change in improving that particular KPI. The second one, of course, is that we would like to use innovative communication approach on one hand to raise awareness, but on the long run to change the habits that users have on how they use the day-to-day -day mobility. And this is not easy. It takes 66 days of continuous repetition of an activity for it to become automatic, but it takes 254 days for this activity to become subconscious. So changing a habit, it's not just writing a good article or repeating the same story every three months, but it's a continuous work with each and every individual uh, that we need to deal for, well, let's say almost a year in particular. So you might be asking what actually then NOMO is. Uh, NOMO is basically nothing more but a solution to uh, uh, the day-to-day -day mobility needs of an individual. So it's a free, intuitive, user-friendly service that on one hand uh, efficiently meets the daily mobility needs, while on the other hand, we also help save money, time, and of course, taking care of the reduction of uh, the user's carbon footprint. The solution itself is basically based on the concept of mobility as a service. Uh, it places user in the center uh, of the mobility services, and it offers the customer, of course, the solution or a combination of solutions based, based on their individual needs. This is how we encourage users to use more sustainable uh, mobility solutions on one hand, but what is more important, also important is that we proactively interact with them and actually raise, raise awareness on short term and help. And this helps us make uh, uh, change the mindset on the long run. For the end user, uh, Nomo is available to users, will be available to the users in form of mobile application that can be installed on uh, all mobile dev devices. It's completely free of charge, of course, with the exception of the services that uh, the customers would like to use, such as uh, bicycle uh, rent, uh, uh, e-car rent, or similar. From the perspective of the integration, uh, the platform is completely open for integration of any kind of services uh, of any mobility service providers, such as uh, cars, bicycle, bus, carpooling, train, and other services, regardless of who the provider is, as long as they're capable uh, and willing for the integration. Uh, we also enable uh, review and access of uh, existing uh, bus, train, and other similar schedules. Uh, service reservation integration is possible. Uh, of course, we provision payment services and we can provision uh, the mobility service uh, 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 specifics, such as unlocking the bike, car, and putting it uh, back to uh, the lock mode after it has been used. From the integration perspective, perspective, the business model currently stands in a position that there are also no integration costs for the service providers, uh, just uh, the costs uh, uh, that originate from a potential integration needs on the side of the provider. But to be a bit more practical, uh, let's take a look at the short demo video. So as said, it's intuitive and really easy to use uh, solution, which on one hand uh, allows user to set its own preferences on which kind of uh, mobility services he or she would like to use. But while on the other hand, we also collect preferences on what is important to the customer, cost, uh, carbon footprint, time, convenience, and similar. As mentioned before, Nomo actually puts a uh, customer in the center uh, of the mobility by providing insights of the available mobility resources that are integrated in the platform such as uh, bike sharing platforms or uh, e-scooter platforms. But these are not most common ways that we use mobility on a daily basis because our goal is basically to get from point A to point B. And what we provide is basically a seamless and easy to use uh, 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 route planning platform that combines all available mobility services around you and based on the preferences that the customer chose, 
also enable and the provisioning can use each other. Such as in this particular case, the customer selected to use the e-scooter uh, e uh, and we're currently working on the integration on first of all, how to provision it in money, but second of all, also on how to provision it by unlocking it and locking it after it has been used. These, of course, are individual integration, which, which, come, with, uh, which come with some complexity, but uh, more and more uh, providers are uh, willing to join the platform uh, because we don't touch the value chain uh, of it. The second part of the story is that we need to understand that mobility does not happen only in a particular city, but it also happens between cities or in the whole Slovenia. In this particular case, we are seeing the use of multimodal mobility uh, between Ljubljana and Maribor, uh, where a customer is offered to walk, then to drive a public transportation to the train station, use the train to get to Maribor, and then uh, another uh, bus to get to the end location, including some walking. What we can provide to uh, all service providers is, of course, the integration of uh, any kind of provisioning services, uh, uh, not only for purchasing tickets, but also for uh, the uh, needs of ticket validation and similar. And of course, in the future, we plan to offer to the customers combined and safe preferences. Each multimodal route is calculated upon the preferences that the customer has. But at the same time, we also calculate the carbon footprint, uh, the cost relevance and the time used for each and individual uh, uh, trip that uh, the user has done, uh, which means that we have a cool reporting uh, dashboard or data in place that can be used once the regulation gets a bit stricter and individuals and companies might need to do this in a different way. But you may ask yourself, what are we actually trying to achieve? Our goal is that after the project goes live, uh, we expect that in five years time, uh, following results of the project implementation uh, will pop out. Uh, we believe that we can influence approximately 30% reduction of mobility-related air pollutants per engaged user. We believe that we can uh, raise awareness of approximately 50% of the general public of the topics of sustainable mobility. And definitely, we believe that uh, we can change at least 10% of behavior for Compared to the uh, uh, compared to the baseline, moving customers more in a way of using sustainable mobility services. As an end, I would like to outpoint again: the platform is completely open, and we welcome all service providers to integrate. It's completely free of charge, as per users, as per those who would, are willing to integrate. Because the only thing that we would like to achieve at the end is to meet the customer's need. And they expressed it about 12 months ago in the international research that was done. They demand a simple, seamless solution that will resolve all their mobility needs in one place, quick, efficiently, without needing to have 25 different applications uh, on their mobile phone and deal with a variety of invoices, uh, purchases, and similar. This is what customers need and the positive impacts uh, on the environment is actually the outcome of a mass usage of it. So that will be in short all from our side. Thank you. Thank you, Jonas, for your presentation. And now we will start with the round table. So all guests and audience, you are invited to ask questions via chat. And I will try, you know, to find the appropriate panelists and, and ask them the question on your behalf. So uh, in this round table, we will talk, of course, about mobility as a service. And first question will go to Janusz Križan, who, who is not over yet. So I will start Janusz immediately. So the question goes for mobility as a service usually starts in cities. But what about outside city, you know, about regional maybe mobility as a service? Or in Slovenia, we also have the concept of smart villages, so in rural areas. So how you as an automotive association of Slovenia will tackle this challenge? Thank you, uh, Daniel. This is a really, really good question. Uh, the point of MOMO as a project and the solution is that this is not 
a solution that can be used only in municipalities, cities, and similar. The, we actually digitalized the entire country, which means that the service with available mobility service providers can be used wherever. So it's not micro, micromodal mobility for the city of Ljubljana, Maribor, and similar, but it can be used in uh, smaller municipalities, either individually, but what is most important, at the same time, it can be used also where people travel to another location. You just have one solution and you have access to everything. Because those of us that use mobility on a daily basis, we use it primarily to get to work and back and to spend weekend with our friends, family in some nice part of our country, which means that we cannot stick only with local, but we need to look a bit more global. For, for the figure of speech, currently global means Slovenia, but definitely if there are needs, we can uh, digitalize any country and spread it out uh, through the entire Europe if needed. Great. I, I have just a short question from the audience related to you, Janas. So the question goes, uh, in Slovenia, we are using Prevozipika.org. So for our audience, this is web-based, you know, crowdsourcing or uh, uh, where people are uh, agreeing on to join the, the, uh, the trip, you know, around Slovenia and also internationally, globally. So Janas, the question goes, uh, is it possible also to integrate such web-based platform as a Prevozipika org to your platform? I don't see any reason why not. Because we don't stick only with mobility providers. This is for, for sure. What we also plan in the future and what we are completely open to is we would like to see parking service providers also to join the platform because parking is a part of mobility, like it or not. It's the same with the, let's say, EV charging infrastructure. The only thing that we as Amazon, as an integrator of all mobility services would like to achieve is to, 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 to basically combine all the services for the customer's needs in one place. And the customer is the one choosing the best way of getting from point to point B. Great. So the next question will go to Matej Chair. So uh, Matej, uh, like we said in the presentation, uh, you are the pioneer of uh, shared and electric mobility in Slovenia and in the region. So, uh, and we saw the development over past five years, but in next five years, where do you see that mobility as a service evolve in your company and in general in Slovenia? So your prediction. Uh, I will use one uh, quote. Uh, human beings are designed to learn. Uh, so uh, um, once uh, I can see now with the existing mobility service uh, solutions, uh, uh, I can say 90% of people who start to use it, uh, they retain. So the, the, and, uh, and uh, in the future, we know there are already many uh, new technologies and solutions on the market which are not commercialized yet, but as soon as soon they will, uh, I, I see ownership uh, in the similar way of the car um, as today we have uh, horses. So uh, for luxury purposes uh, uh, and mobility services is gonna be probably mainstream and uh, um, uh, owning asset probably within five to 10 years will be become obsolete. So that's my vision. So what uh, regarding our, um, our development, uh, our vision is in five years to be in at least uh, 10 countries and uh, uh, further develop with further developing uh, business models and uh, uh, a stronger position on the, in the region. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, next question will go for Clement. So Clement, in your presentation, you highlighted, you know, uh, how micro mobility offering can be specifically tailor made, you know, to the tourism and hospitality. And we would like to learn, you know, what were your, what were the drivers that you focus on the niche market tourism? Um, Basically, uh, good half a year ago, uh, we had a uh, um, we did quite a, a extensive research of competition, uh, looking for a blue ocean, uh, finding uh, uh, an area that nobody does uh, at all. 
Uh, and uh, this is the reason we went into the area there, there is the least competition um, and uh, combined with some smart, uh, smart solutions and in an innovative solution, uh, especially doing virtual stops, uh, taking uh, no, no real um, infrastructure for, for setting up a spot, uh, so basically, we can we can uh, use this uh, software as a service. Uh, 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 we can deploy this software as a service uh, 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 quite easily with with no big infrastructure uh, infrastructure uh, uh, projects. We see from uh, e-bike stations uh, how complicated it can be to set up uh, uh, only a small uh, a small uh, town. Uh, 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 for for this uh, immobility stations, so so uh, this is the reason. Basically, no competition at this moment at all on this area, and and making uh, it uh, profitable for for uh, our clients, uh, because it's it's usually now uh, when you leave the the guest when your guest leaves the the hotel, you lose your revenue stream, and uh, we want to to keep their guests on their revenues uh, until they come back to sleep. Mm -hmm. Yes, great. So, uh, Marko Gucek, I would um, ask you a question from the audience. And the question goes that some studies show that mass mobility as a service works and is profitable only in high density areas uh, with high quality public transport as a backbone. And since you operate mainly outside you know, the cities, so, uh, and we know that there are some barriers in Slovenia. So what is your view, how to overcome it? So how to make, you know, mobility as a service profitable also outside, uh, you know, large urban areas like cities? Yeah, we, we actually proved it that it can be profitable uh, actually on really less traveled routes. Um, so we don't operate only like on Ljubljana, Venice, which is a bit more frequent. Uh, but we operate also with uh, Zagreb, Trieste, um, connecting even before COVID, Rijeka, Pula, um, Graz, uh, Vienna also now. Um, so we have really, um, and also in Italy, in Italy we have even more connections which are really in a way less traveled, but the dynamic pricing just works in the way that then in some cases it increases the price, but still the average price is good enough that it's still some people book it and still the carriers are profitable. Um, so um, the, the, the logic we created actually can work. Um, of course, when connecting to airports, we always had this, um, this plus of people pre-booking because they pre-book the flight tickets. So it's much easier for our algorithms to work. Um, and also people still have to pay a lot for the parking. Uh, and this is something that uh, it's not so strong uh, in the intercity or daily movements, shorter routes. Um, so this is for sure something that we still have to learn. Um, but yeah, I believe that um, based on all the, um, the market research that we're doing, uh, based on what actually people want to to experience, um, we see that there is space for us, um, and then just you know which are, would be the right price balance uh, to have it profitable for the long term. But the great part of uh, the shuttle business is it's a van, so it's small. You can have high occupancy quite fast, um, and and therefore also profitability easier to reach than with the bus. Great. So the next question from the audience, I will ask Mariam Biltran to answer. So the question goes like uh, many new micro mobility car sharing and ride sharing services aim to reduce the car use. But in reality, many examples show that a lot of people also stop using public transportation, while the impact on congestion is minimal. Yes, it's still minimal. So how uh, will you better target your services to do, avoid those issues? So we know that uh, when you know Uber started or, or autonomous mobility, everybody claimed that uh, you know congestions will disappear, but this is a slow process. So Marian, what are your thoughts about this? As I mentioned before, I think that uh, the public transport is a backbone. So without that, we will not be able to change any uh, culture or habits or 
or you know change uh, the infrastructure problem that we are aware of that we are not going to move towards net emission uh, net zero emission you know i think car sharing should be uh, and all other you know sharing sharing uh, also bike shares and, and etc you know should be uh, supporting the backbone so you know the, the mass transportation and also uh, you know about what marco is, uh, is is talking about you know it should support the long term uh, the the long haul drives that needs need to be uh, put on a, either a train or a bus you know and this is all about what our initiative is all about you know we need to put more you know riders on one bus or more riders on trains so you know we get clean air we get you know less parking we get less uh, less you know less basically less cars on a on a, on a on a highway or or in the in, in a city center, you know. So it has to be a combination of everything, uh, and I, I believe this is a win, you know, and this is the future. Okay. So next question from our audience goes to all panelists, and I would kindly ask you: It's about your growth strategy, organic acquisition, joint venture, external investment. So the question goes: uh, the companies. Uh, here are planning to achieve their expansion plans purely through organic or, uh, growth, or are you considering also acquisitions, joint venture, external investments to help achieve your goals? So I would start, you know, with Yanis. I think uh, your, even through presentation, this answer was pretty straightforward with collaboration, collaboration, and collaboration. Great. Uh, so we are moving uh, to Matej Cher. Sorry, would you repeat the question? Yes, the question goes, uh, it's about growth strategy. So mm -hmm. is Avant Car planning the growth organically? Uh, or are you planning, you know, with acquisitions, joint ventures, uh, uh, mm -hmm. fundraising? Um, we see mobility... Uh as a new infrastructure and uh, infrastructure is a uh, uh, big asset and uh, as a startup or business developer uh, we are not financial institution or uh, so we, we are looking for sure in the future for um, strategic partnerships uh, or uh, some venture uh, private equity investments great right. so same question for clement yeah um we are basically addressing at this moment uh, European, uh, so our neighboring countries, which are in coincidence also also um, big uh, tourism countries. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, of course, uh, our two two problem areas are are uh, basically supply chain, uh, which is. Uh, uh, 120 days usually for our uh, for our uh, vehicles. It can be even longer. Uh, we all know conditions. So 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 uh, helping uh, to 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 actually go over this uh, 120 days. Of course, uh, capital is needed, and of course, uh, with with big exp expansion plans, there is uh, a, a need for for strategic investors, especially. Uh, mainly tourist players in, in this region. Okay, great. And Marco, you also already successfully completed the fundraising uh, stage, but what's next? Organic growth or further fundraising? Yeah, yeah we successfully completed a few times before, but now uh, due to COVID, uh, of course, the situation is different. So we are now back on this organic slow growth. Um, and yeah, when we will have some results, uh, for sure, fundraising uh, is one of the options. Um, or, of course, strategic investor, or, or of course, in the end, I think the key is collaboration, like Yana said, um, and we all repeated. Um, and done in, in what way we will collaborate? Is it also in financial? Uh, of course, we are completely open to various options. Great. So, Marian, I, I think that you, Domag, already consolidated 13 companies. Yes. So, what in the future we can expect from Nomago? Organic growth or more acquisitions, joint ventures? 
as as you mentioned, yeah, we we merged quite a lot of companies in the in the past. So yeah, acquisition and and uh, uh, basically mergers is is our uh, let's say uh, the the pillar or or the beginning of of what we are now. And I think without that, we wouldn't be the key player now. You know, uh, without that, we would not be sitting here talking about the future, talking about the software development because you know we took the best out of every company and we uh, you know created a new vision and we uh, and with this you know in, in mind nomago was basically built and uh, of course the future in our opinion is divided in in several ways you know first we we see us between venice and dubrovnik so um, yeah of course there's a lot of space for acquisition and um, and mergers here and this is definitely what we're looking at um, uh, we we need to you know um, put several uh, basically smaller players in under one umbrella because you know there is uh, there's competition coming in which is much bigger than we are and uh, uh, I guess uh, uh, that's just the, the the way that you you need to go forward but on the other side you know if we we look at the user in the center yeah collaboration as Yanis said and I think everybody here is supporting that is is definitely needed because uh, everyone you know just having one part of the mobility covered will not succeed and we are also you know for sure not gonna uh, develop or 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 go into acquisition on every single sector of of mobility we have to be aware that mobility is also walking so i don't know how we can acquire that one you know but okay you know uh I think it has to be a mix of everything. Also, strategic partnerships are are definitely key um, to uh, you know to going forward. But you know, finally, I think user has to be the winner, and we need to all together support that uh, in order to you know do the goals that that we have you know for the future. So zero net emission that that has to be the focus of everybody you know. And mobility is a, a huge polluter at the end you know so. It's important, I think. Great. So we have three more questions. So the next one uh, is uh, basically, and it's already answered partially, and maybe I will just comment it quickly so that we, uh, because the time is flying really fast today and the conversation here is very inspiring and insightful. So the time is really uh, flying really quickly. So the question goes, as all of the talkers are IT companies selling their platform, how do you see the option of corporations? So uh, it was already shared. So many of our panelists are, are basically uh, integrators or uh, solution or system or IT system providers. So some of them will partner with every uh, player some of them will have basically standalone approach so it it was i believe already answered in the presentation so uh, i would therefore i would uh, like to jump to the next question which goes to uh, janas krijan and the question is what are the currently the main challenges automotive association is facing in developing the intermodal platform Basically, the, I think that the biggest challenge at this point in time is that, in particular, I, I think it's the same on the all markets, but for Slovenia, we can definitely claim this, is the fear of losing the customer and the fear of cooperating with the competition. Uh, we did some research and we understand why uh, all uh, similar attempts failed. But they failed because usually one service provider try to, 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 to establish a platform that would provide multimodal mobility services. And of course, meeting the first competitor on the market, they don't want to integrate. Mm -hmm. And this is where we in AMSA have a bit different position because we don't provide any service. We are just purely and simply a service integrator of all services available out there. And we have a, a big incentivized uh, business model behind, uh, meaning that we provide uh, a level playing uh, field for all the providers, uh, while on the other hand, uh, we have only one focus uh, ahead of us. This is meeting 
customer demands and meeting closing sustainability challenges uh, that I mentioned in the beginning of my presentation. Super. So we have also a last question, which goes for Goopti, uh, so for Marco. So are you already using electric vehicles on those regional routes, or are you considering purchasing electric vehicles for your service, among other things, given the existing driving style, like 80 uh, kilometers per hour on the highway stops and lines? Yeah, we actually have three, uh, just 420s coming in a few months. Uh, hopefully the next generation because the first three actually were not so useful. <laughs> um, yeah, we, for these longer distances, which we are covering mostly now, they are not useful yet. So for sure the technology is not there yet, uh, especially because we are mostly um, driving on highways. And if we are driving 100 uh, with air condition off, of course our uh, passengers would complain. Um, really strongly. So um, we have them, we, we were testing with them, we still do some short rides with them, so we're trying as much as possible to use them. Um, and I hope now this next generation will be more useful, um, but more or less, uh, yeah, we have them prepared for the shorter routes. Okay, so uh, my last question will go for Clement, Marian and Matej. So, um, in one sentence, can you share with our audience how to make mobility as a service as a first choice for moving from A to B? So, Clement, maybe I will start with you. I think uh, multimodality, um, having all options in in uh, either either platform, since it can be integrated quite quickly. Great. Marian? Uh, as I mentioned before, the, uh, we believe in platformization. So platform is the key and, uh, you know, and digital support of that, uh, basically changing the, the, the old ways of, uh, of thinking about mobility towards basically platform, platformizing it and digitalizing it. And that, that could be the, the, the key to integrating further to NAS. Great. Matej? Uh, okay, from the human kind, uh, from this side, uh, I think the uh, education is the key. So it's uh, it's clear that there is no other uh, smart answer than uh, if we have already all the facts uh, about the costs, about the pollution, about the losing time, uh, focus, etc. It's the only education and uh, and uh, providing the tests tests with uh, such a solutions we already heard today. I think those three answers were amazing. Mm -hmm. If we would agree in advance, we would not think about mm -hmm. this so great. So we have multimodality platforms and education. So with that, I would like really to close uh, our today's roundtable. I would really like to thank all the panelists for your contribution. It was very very insightful and inspiring. And I'm really looking forward and wish you all success, you know, in your future journey, because mobility as a service just started. It is for me, the biggest disruption in automotive space in last 100 years. And this will be with us for next 100 years. So thank you. And with that, I would like to close this round table and I would like to share only two uh, things as a closing remarks. Um, and basically, first thing is that Slovenia is leading the EU presidency. And for that purpose, uh, in Ljubljana, there is also a new showroom opened. And next week from 12 to 16, you can visit it because there will be some providers, especially hardware, let's call it like that, hardware and some software providers of mobility uh, ecosystem in Slovenia present, and you can visit them. Uh, from nine to six uh, every day uh, during working days. And the second thing is invitation to Expo Dubai. Uh, Slovenia will have a pavilion and we will share many stories starting with 1st of October and being there for six months. So if you are in the neighborhood in Dubai, please visit us and we can you know, have the conversation. So uh, with that, I would like to thank the Spirit Slovenia for organizing this event and uh, basically sharing with the world what Slovenia can offer. And with that, 
I would like to thank you and I would like to wish you a lovely day. Thank you and goodbye.